Hi guys, uh, I want to go over a little bit of motor maintenance uh, for people who still run these rebuildable uh, brushed motors. Um, kind of helping out a, a friend, um, the AOGRC on YouTube, so go check him out. Um, he had a question about the, uh, the RZ motor, which is very similar to the BZ, just uh, maybe 500 to 1000 RPM more. Um, and I think it actually has, I'm not sure if it has lay down or stand up brushes, but we'll get into the brushes later. Um, so, um, if you don't have a, a motor stand jig where you could uh, set your motors up in, you know, you could uh, put it in this way and clamp it down to help you work on it, keep your fingers clear and all that stuff. Get a block of foam, styrofoam. Just stab it in. It'll work. Uh, first things first, remove the springs. These springs are both the same tension. They're not polarized or anything, so that's good. Pull out your brushes. Another thing, these motors have a locking tab, so you can't screw up which direction to put the end bell on because you can alter the timing and the direction and the rotation so just keep that in mind undo the screws now what I like to do is I like to push the screws down try to pull it up pull it out there are going to be some washers as you can see there there's two of them here Keep track of where they go because you're going to need to put them back in the same spot. If you don't pull the brushes out first, this is a non-conductive fiber washer. So you don't short out the copper from the, from the uh, washers to the end bell and whatnot. So this always goes on first and then you put your spacers on top of that. So keep that in mind. Pull your brushes first or you'll break these. These are very hard to find. And then simply try not to touch the copper part as much. As I was saying, try not to, to touch the com as much as you can with your fingers. Uh, again, there's more, more washers down in here, but this one, this one, a little stubborn little sucker doesn't want to come out. So there they are. Two more. So those go on the, uh, the output. So you can see this comb is pretty decent. It's not tore up. It's a little dirty. So you can take uh, some mild parts cleaner, non-chlorinated, uh, brake parts or parts cleaner, whatever you want to call it. Um, I prefer electrical connector cleaner. Um, or if your region still sells electric motor cleaners for RC cars, use that. That's a much better option. But uh, getting this back together, take your two washers, put them on, or two spacers, whatever you want to call them. And they're very thin. They're not like regular washers. Try not to lose them. Stick it back in. Take your fiber washer. I'm not going to put this on the lathe or anything. That's, that's another video. Put your spacers back on. There's that locking tab on the Tamiya motors. There's the locking tab here. See how that locked right down in there? I can't turn it. Uh, most of the Tamiya motors come with this uh, PC board for the capacitors, which is just noise suppressors for electric motors, <clears throat> excuse me, to uh, help reduce frequency and radio noise to the radios on the old 27, 72, and 75 megahertz AM FM radios. Um, not sure how well they are for uh, 2.4s, but I left it in there anyway, even though I run 2.4. So you just tighten down your end bell screws. Don't go crazy with these. 
because if you go too crazy with them you can bend the motor ring inside and then it won't lock down so just snug them up uh, for brushes most brushes I forgot my calipers most brushes are like 9.80 millimeters long to uh, maybe maybe 10 millimeters long uh, this brush here is about the third of length if I can get it to line up that would be perfect okay this brush was is almost completely done they get to about four or five millimeters five five and a half excuse me maybe even six millimeters long they are no good you have to replace them so out with the bad then with the new and uh, I always like to put the shunt of the brush downward with these type of springs because it lines up with the slot on the back of the brush very easy I'm trying to keep this all in all in frame people so bear with me okay so there's one give it a little snap test uh, these BZ motors they do have um, a brush dampener in there so it makes them really tight but they shouldn't be too tight where you can't pull them in and out and if it's really tight then it's a hung brush and that's not going to give you um, a connection on the com make sure you get the spring see how I got that spring underneath the shunt that's not where you want it so I have to take that back off pull the shunt down put the spring in now it's lined up oh, and there we go okay it's a simple BZ motor uh, again you can't mess up the timing on these so it's very simple to do Getting back to uh, like an Epic based or a Trinity motor, uh, Yokomo's um, top motors, those are all basically the same as these, same principle. Take the springs off first, pull out your brushes, I, I've already changed these as you can see. Okay, now what I want to do. Is I double check where my positive side is to any stickers or markings on the motor so when I put it back on I know where it's got to be I always have the positive and towards the crease of my uh, my hand here so when I loosen up the screws as you can see they're not very tight they don't have to be you don't need to crank them down now lug nut okay this one here, you can pull it off, and you could, you could turn this completely 360 degrees on this motor. Again, this com looks good because I put this on the lathe already and cleaned it all up. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, my daughter was using this in her Kong head. This is a 19 turn. Uh, spacers are in there, and so. I didn't lose any spacers, so I'm going to put this back on, but I'm going to show you exactly what I mean, how you could change if it's going to work for me. And now this end bell is 180 degrees off. Positive is on this side instead of on this side in correlation with the timing marks here. Some motors have timing marks, some do not. Um, if they do not, just remember before you take it apart you could always put a sharpie mark on one side or the other don't put it on both because you'll confuse yourself just one side uh, put a mark on it scribe it even where the brushes go it, just so you know where to put it back um, again the brushes are usually in the center of the magnets in there there's two magnets a north pole and a south pole um, so that's one way 
where you know you can get your zero degrees timing. Right in the center of the magnet. Again, if it has timing marks, you know it's zero degrees. So that's advanced, that's normal. So again, it's very simple. You know, if the motor's really dirty, shoot it up with some cleaner, non-chlorinated, um, and make sure you dry it well. And when you're done with that, you're done cleaning your motors, putting new brushes in, take your micro oiler or any light oil, like a machine, machine oil works. Um, there, there are specific oils for bearings and bushings, um, but just make sure it's light. Just put a drop on the shaft there and a drop on the shaft there. I don't know if you can see it, but there's just a tiny drop in there. That's all you need. Um, don't spray the motor down with WD-40 and put it back together. That's a no-no. WD-40 is flammable. Um, and uh, it's going to smell bad. It's going to burn nasty. It, it's just, don't do it. Don't douse your motor with oil. It doesn't need it. You only need it on the bushings or the bearings for the shaft. And I'm being a little OCD by trying to get these eyelets in the right spot. Okay, so that's locked down. I can't turn it. You see, I didn't even crank it down. So, again, I'm putting the, the shunt for the brushes on this motor upward because there's a slot in the brush hood where the shunt goes through. So, it's very easy to uh, not get it confused and not get it hung up. Now, work the spring around and connect it. That one's already in. And there you go. It's that simple. Now, do I have a... Yes, I do. I have a battery right here. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to stick it in here. I'll put that down there. I'll put this on here. And let's see if it runs. It's not going to run with this battery. It's not going to run with this battery, guys. I'm sorry. This battery's NFG. So, this is a no-no and I don't recommend it, but she runs. And here's the other thing. When you look at a motor and it's all back together properly, you look at the output shaft, you can put a piece of tape on it and hook up a stronger battery, better than what I had. Um, don't don't use your main power battery. That's just a, that was a no no. But put a piece of tape on the shaft and make sure it rotates counterclockwise, looking at the output shaft view. They always rotate, not always, 95% of them rotate counterclockwise for RC cars. Um, going from there, again, this is an old brush. These are new brushes. There's a couple of different types. You can get the kinds with eyelets. And these are double shunt, which means there's two leads on it. Or you can get the solder on ones, which are a little more difficult to do, but they, they transfer current a lot easier and a lot faster. So you got that. Again, it's about a third worn. So I just decided to pull this one out and toss it. And I'm glad I didn't actually throw it out because I wanted to show you the difference. Um, if they're this size or shorter, let me go get my calipers. I'll be right back. All right, got my caliper, got it zeroed out. That didn't take long. Come on, get in there. That's at 8 millimeters. Well, 8.04, 8.05. Uh, roughly, like I said, new ones are around 9.8 millimeter. So, either way, 
Uh, just a little common sense. Don't over oil them. That's not good for them. Um, if you're not sure where your timing marks are at or where they need to be, mark your end bell in your can somewhere on one side only. So when you take it apart, you put it back together, you know where it's going to go. Don't lose your shims. Count them. Make sure that they go back into the same spot. There should be a little bit of end play in there. Not a lot because that would go find your sweet spot. Well, that's another motor tuning uh, trick from years ago. Uh, I won't get into that. Um, uh, brushes. There is a such thing as... Now these are all stand-ups. These are all stand-up brushes. Let me go see if I can find a motor with that's got lay-down brushes. Be right back. Okay, so... These are uh, totally different brushes for uh, these type of motors up here. They take P94 brushes. They're bigger than standard brushes. You won't use those in typical motors. Okay, so getting back, you see how the length of the brush hood is longer up and down than it is side by side? That's what you'd call a, a stand-up brush. Lay down brushes, it's wider side to side than it is up and down. Now this is this is a Trinity 2PK2 Pro rebuildable stock motor. And uh, it's a 27 turn by one. I don't know if you can see that. But look at the RPM on this sucker. 32,953 RPM for a stock motor. 10 turn, 11 turn, 12 turn, 13 turn. None of these hit these numbers. This Cobalt does, but that's that's a highly modified motor. But um, I never ran this motor, but there's the difference between stand up and lay down. Um, most brushes are set up and come already with a little curve in them. So make sure you get the proper brushes for your motor when you go to put it back together and run it um, at like three, three and a half, four volts for a few minutes. Let it cool down for a good 20 minutes and do it again. Uh, pull the brush out, check, make sure how it's seating. Once it's seated, you're good to go. Um, Again, any, uh, any comments or questions, leave them below. I will try to answer them the best I can. Um, let's see. Oh, the motor stand is uh, from RPM. I believe you can still get these. And it comes with two motor holders. Uh, you can set it this way. You can set it this way. You can set it this way. You can even lay it down so you can set your motor. If I didn't have the cardboard in there. The reason why I have cardboard in there is because it's a metal screw on a motor label and you didn't want that. I don't want that. So you can set it in there like that. It's great for doing motor maintenance. Uh, you can lock it down. So, you know, if you're working on your motor and you've got to solder on some leads or whatnot, you're not trying to hold it down. The other trick is, is you could use... Uh, Put it on your bench, use like a, a strap on a piece of wood, strap it down to hold it in place. You could bore a hole in a piece of wood so you can stand it up, or like I said, that method works. If that doesn't work, sometimes you can use an old spray can top to hold it. Now this one doesn't hold it very well, it's very loose. but. There's, there's all kinds of ways you could uh, get your motors to be held. Um, so, you know, good luck, guys. Uh, hopefully this helps. Um, and hopefully, uh, Craig, this helps you out a lot. Uh, again, if you have any other questions or comments, dude, give me a shout-out. Um, I forgot to talk about the capacitor on here. Uh, 
the capacitor, the capacitor, again, is only to uh, stop radio noise frequencies to getting into the receiver and giving you glitches. Um, it's not going to stop your motor from running. Never has, never will. I just pulled that one out. Now again, let's see, there's a positive, okay. Uh, neither one of these is going to work. All right, well, never mind. I can't show you that, that uh, it'll run that way without it, but believe me, it does. Um, so, it'll work. Uh, Woohoo! Dropping stuff. Oh, see, I cut that one clean. Don't get excited, people. That's not the motor in here. I'm pulling this out. Uh, oh, crap. There's no capacitors in this one. Well, this here is another Trinity Speedworks Tony Nisinger motor. Uh, got this in a lot, but that's not going to work for the purpose that I had in mind. However, this old Speedworks 427 motor. which does not get reused, and I probably shouldn't even take it out of the box, but I am. There's a couple of capacitors, different styles, but they all work the same. This motor is absolutely brand new, never been used, never ran, never soldered, nothing. Uh, you'll be lucky, again, I got this in a lot, and uh, you know what, I'm not even going to tell you what these things are worth. I got lucky with this one and I snatched it. So, even with the box, it came with the box and everything. The old blueprint motor. It's a 16 turn double wind, 36,000 RP, 36. What's this? For a stock motor, 32. <coughs> Excuse me. So, yeah, uh, it's only good for four or five minute heats with a four wheel drive car. Keep that in mind when people want to sit there and throw brushed motors in their RC cars, running lipos, that they want to run them for a half an hour. Not good for a brushed motor. Uh, they do get hot, and heat will kill them. They get over 100 and, what is it, 130, 140 degrees, uh, maybe even less, 120, 110. I forget what the specs are on motors. It's been a long time since I actually ran brushed motors, but... Uh, again, they're not as efficient. Uh, they require a lot more maintenance than a brushless system. Uh, if you want to go faster, you don't want to keep rebuilding your motors, cleaning them up, changing the brushes after every two or three runs at 10 minutes. So, you know, you get 20 minutes, a half an hour out of a set of brushes, you got to change them. So, or you could just run them down. Um, I did forget to talk about the, the com itself, the internal part of the motor where the brushes hit. Uh, there are specific um, diameters that they have to be. Um, again, I didn't mic it. Uh, each motor manufacturer is different. Um, but again, Craig, if you want to know, man, I'll take this one back apart. And I'll mic my, uh, my com in there. And I'll let you know, and you can compare it with your RZ. And uh, from there, you can determine if the motor's no good or not. Especially if the copper uh, on uh, the armature is black, brownish in color instead of pure copper. Uh, if it's not copper color, then it's probably burnt. Somebody ran the snout out of it, and it got too hot. Over gearing does the same thing. Not good for brushed motors. You have to have your gearings good. Um, well, uh, while I'm here, 
think this is a 9 or a 10 turn motor. This is a 19. This is the Komodo Dragon 19 by Trinity. That's a different style of PC board. Okay, we know this is the 27, but it's got surface mounted capacitors on each side of the heat sink of the brush hood, so you don't have to solder any on. This one does also. This is the uh, the uh, Trinity uh, Green Machine Pro th 3, I think. Yep, 3. And it's part of the Retro Series, which goes with these three mod four Modifieds. These four Modifieds, like this, uh, this is a 427. Totally different looking than this 427. They had several different kinds. This one's a 10 turn. That one was a 16 turn. Again, surface mounted capacitors on here, so you don't have to solder any on. Um, so I have all the retro series motors, 10, 11, 12, and 13 turn, 27. Uh, they did make some for the Emacs, the Traxxas Emacs, which are 550s, and they had three different, three different ones of those. Mild, wild, and pro um, hand wound. Uh, well... That concludes this, guys. Um, I'd like to do some testings on these. I'd like to get some more modified motors to run on the motor dyno. Uh, I would like to do a video on how to uh, use the motor lathe and uh, clean up the com and make it all nice and shiny again. Um, there are videos out there, but I want to do one anyway because some of you have seen it, some of you haven't. So uh, for those who haven't, I wanted to do one. Um, well, anyway guys, this went on long enough. Uh, wish you all luck on uh, your motor maintenance. Again, clean them, degrease them and all that stuff. Change your brushes every two or three runs, especially if you're running more than 10 minutes on a motor. Uh, make sure you get the right brushes before you take the motor apart. Mark with a Sharpie somewhere or something positive side brush usually there's dents on the motor but um, after a couple of times of doing this stuff you'll you'll get the hang of it where you won't have to mark it you'll you kind of just know um, you mark them before you take them apart pull the brushes out before you take them apart or you'll break that uh, that fiber washer in there, that non-conductive fiber washer, and then you'll be scratching your head trying to figure out why it's shorting out when you put it back together. Not a good thing. Take your time. Count your spacers and your or your washers, spacers, whatever you want to call it. Make sure you put them back in the same spot. Don't tighten the end bell screws all the way like uh, like your Arnold Schwarzenegger reefing on uh, a lug nut. You don't need it super tight. <coughs> And uh, just a drop of oil on the end bell and or the bushing, like this one here. This one could use it because this motor's been sitting for a little while. There's a little drop, and there's a drop. Just need a little drop. Um, these are bushings in this. You can replace the bushings with bearings, but you have to make sure that they're seated squarely. Um, Getting into motors like these with uh, more of adjustable timing or, or even this one here. There are special tools to get the, uh, the brush hoods lined up properly in conjunction with the motor and the magnet, or the magnets, not the motor, but the, ma the magnets. Um, and make sure it's in proper time and not kinked one way or the other. <coughs> Excuse me again. Dry. But... Uh, that's uh, that's something. Uh, that's another video for another time. But for the RZ motors, you don't have to worry about much of the timing as much because they are locked. After if it's not locked, we'll get it running. Make sure you follow which way the direction's going by putting a piece of tape, and maybe a, a two-cell AA battery holder or something. Make sure that end shaft's rotating counterclockwise while you're looking at the end shaft. Well, hopefully this helps a lot of people. Again, any comments, questions, please leave them below, and have a good day.
and thanks for watching.